army, the IDF, the Israeli Air Force, in the second Lebanon war was able to neutralize all of the mid-range and long-range rockets because they were vulnerable. They were out in silo somewhere. Today, Hezbollah has more than three times the amount of rockets, a great, a great increased number of middle-range and long-range rockets, far more accurate, far deadlier payloads, bigger payloads. And Hezbollah has internalized the lessons of the Gold, Goldstone Report. Uh, those rockets are no longer in silos. Those rockets have been placed in households, they've been placed in hospitals, they've been placed in schools. I've actually seen pictures of homes that have been populated by, uh, by Hamas, and in the basement there is a rocket aimed at downtown Tel Aviv. And Hezbollah has done that because they know that if they get an order to shoot from Tehran, and Tehran is calling the orders there, more about that shortly, um, that when we go to defend ourselves, we're going to come up against BDS, we're going to come up against Goldstone, we're going to be accused of killing civilians. And, um, and so this poses, the, the BDS poses an actual strategic challenge to the state of Israel threat. Right. Now, um, just about any attempt in history to destroy us as a people, whether it be the Inquisition or the Holocaust, has always been preceded by attempts to dehumanize us. Pretty much that's the goal of much of this EDS activity. Um, that, uh, but the, and, and this is no exception because BDS can render us vulnerable to the most momentous challenge of all that we face, and that is the threat of Iranian nuclearization. Now, for those who are unfamiliar with this, you know, people often say, well, you know, there can be uh, deterrence such as the Cold War, and, and but they're kind of missing the point. If Iran were to acquire nuclear military capabilities. Uh, Iran required nuclear military capabilities. The danger that Iran would take a nuclear warhead and put it on top one of the many missiles that it has in its arsenal that can reach any city in the state of Israel, it can reach an increasing number of cities in Western Europe too, uh, including Paris already. Uh, that is a danger. That is a danger. But that's only the beginning of the danger. This is an Iranian regime that has sworn, perhaps almost daily, to wipe Israel off the map. And that, if were that regime to acquire uh, military nuclear capabilities, they could then convey those capabilities to terrorist groups, to Hezbollah, to, ha to Hamas, to other groups operating in the region. Um, and uh, Israeli, though, Buriel Barlev and his people do an extraordinary job in guarding our borders. They cannot be hermetically sealed any more than America's borders can be sealed. And um, it poses a mortal challenge uh, to the state of Israel. Were Iran to acquire military nuclear capabilities, then we know of several Middle Eastern states who have gone on record saying that they too will acquire military nuclear capabilities, and we will quickly find ourselves inhabiting a nuclear neighborhood that will be profoundly, profoundly unstable. Profoundly unstable, and resonate throughout the world. So nuclear Iran uh, poses an extraordinary historic <coughs> challenge to the state of Israel. Now, Israel, of course, is not passive in the face of all of these challenges. We're addressing them in various ways. And I think that the Ziad can attest to that our cooperation in the economic field in building the economic foundations uh, for peace, the uh, Palestinian Authority, and particularly the uh, Palestinian Prime Minister, Fayyad, has done an extraordinary job, uh, extraordinary job in, in, in fortifying and developing the foundation, the economic foundations uh, for future Palestinian statehood. We like to say that the economic forecast for next year for the West Bank between 8 and 11 percent. Can I get away with that, you think, this morning? Okay, 8 and 11 percent, uh, with tens of thousands of new jobs created. The Palestinian security forces uh, who have done an outstanding job in uh, restoring law and order uh, in the West Bank has enabled our forces, the IDF, to withdraw from at least four uh, major Palestinian cities, and they're expanding their roles all the time, and we're looking forward to expanding that role further still. Um, and um, we are engaged in these proximity talks, which are discussing uh, some of our views. We're transferring, like we are exchanging views on some of the core issues we're going to have to address in the direct talks. Uh, Jerusalem, borders, security, refugee issues, we're all looking forward to discussing these issues shortly. On the, the great challenges of peace, uh, on the great challenges of peace, the threat that the future West Bank Palestinian state could at some point you know, become a basis for sending missiles or rockets into Israel, we are looking for a, a high degree of demilitarization of that state. That was set, upon, set out in uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu's speech um, just about a year ago, 
year ago this week at Barn Long University, where he talked about effective demilitarization. And he also talked about the need for mutual and reciprocal recognition. When the Palestinian state comes into being, we're going to seek a situation in which, yes, we will recognize Palestine as the nation state of the Palestinian people, and we want the Palestinians to recognize Israel as the nation state of the Jewish people, and that will signify the end of the conflict, the end of claims. On the Iranian issue, again, much happening this week, especially this week. With the passage of 1921 uh, in the Security Council, the fourth sanctions resolution, um, which we hope will serve as a platform for uh, launching extensive um, multilateral, bilateral, unilateral, in the case of the United States, sanctions against Iran. Uh, the State of Israel now, for more than a year, has signed on to President Obama's handling of the Iranian issue. This goes back to the Prime Minister Netanyahu's first meeting with the President last uh, a year ago, May already. And in the, I was in the in the Oval Office with him when the Prime Minister committed himself to the President's handling of the situation, which was a staged, linear process, beginning with outreach, beginning with compromise packages, um, attempts to uh, engage the Iranians and to, to persuade them to desist from enriching uranium on their soil all 